Hello and welcome to the first of Raw's Manifesto Analysis Series for the General Election 2017. To begin with, we're going to look through the Labour Manifesto. I've reduced the Labour Manifesto down to five key points that I think are the main parts of the Labour Manifesto. First of all, we'll talk about renationalisation, whether this is a popular policy. We'll talk about no rise, the pledge to not rise national insurance or VAT, as well as to scrap tuition fees. We'll also look at the tax raises, including a raise of corporation tax to 26% by the end of the Parliament and a raise of income tax to 45p for those earning over £80,000 a year. To join me through this analysis is Henry Riley. First of all, let's talk about renational uh, renationalisation. Is this a popular policy with people, Henry? And do you think that this is something that will win Labour votes? Um, I don't think it will win them votes, but I think that's purely based on the situation they're in at the minute. I mean, they are in such dire strains that um, they can't seem to appeal to the electorate, even when we see YouGov um, running these policies and how popular they are. They are overwhelmingly popular. Things like renationalisation of the railways, the Tories don't promise it, but a majority of Tories support it. Mm. So these policies are things that really should appeal to everyone, um, but they're not, and I think that is directly because of Labour's leadership. So it's not so much the policies that are the problem, like uh, nationalisation, it is the leadership. So um, in terms of rail nationalisation, I think it's popular, um, particularly this year when we've seen the kind of saga with Southern Rail um, and the kind of distress that that's brought people living in that area, you know, missing work and things like that. People seem to be pretty annoyed at that particular franchise. So that is one particular area where they will be very keen to see a renationalisation of services. I think in terms of the energy renationalisation, there's a kind of nuance there in that it doesn't seem to be complete renationalisation. Yeah. It seems to be uh, taking back into public ownership the grid yeah. and then putting state kind of um, state own companies, own companies yeah. into the sector for competition. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do think it's a complete renationalisation on that front, um, but it's not completely um, radical again, that particular one. Uh, another policy that I want to look at is Labour's pledge to scrap tuition fees, something that obviously matters a lot to students, matters a lot in this building, SUHQ. Um, do you think that this is going to be popular with students? Do you think that this will actually turn some students who might have been turned off by Jeremy Corbyn, might turn them back to Labour? Um, to be honest, I think looking at the platform that Corbyn was elected on as leader, it seemed quite clear tuition fees were something he was very keen to try and make free again. I think it's not really an issue, to be honest, tuition fees. If you look at... I mean, the argument for having no tuition fees is that it helps people from poorer and more disadvantaged backgrounds. Now, if you actually look at the evidence, since tuition fees were introduced by Tony Blair and since they were increased or trebled, rather, under the coalition government, it hasn't kind of put people off um, going to university, people from disadvantaged backgrounds are now increasingly more likely to go to university. So I think that in terms of the argument that it will help poorer people, I think that's not really the case. I think what Labour should be focusing on, and the more responsible but less eye-catching thing to focus on, is uh, the restoration of maintenance grants, which there seems to be a complete lack of in Labour's manifesto. Now that is something that directly helps poorer students, poorer people aspiring to go to university by giving them kind of the resources they need at university. And so, you know, I think the kind of focus on tuition fees, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think it's, to be honest, it's just trying to nick votes off uh, the Lib Dems in 2010. That's obviously what they ran on, completely unfeasible. Uh, the Lib Dems shouldn't have promised it. I don't think Labour should. And also, you know, Miliband in 2015 pledged to reduce it from 9,000 to 6,000. I think this is just Corbyn trying to go one better because that policy didn't appeal to students. But yeah, I can see students falling for it, but I don't really think for the right reasons. Do you think then a lot of the voters that voted for the Lib Dems in 2010 for no tuition fees will still feel betrayed by the Liberal Democrats and vote Labour? I think with the issues of Brexit and kind of grammar schools and things like that, people are looking to the Lib Dems for other reasons as opposed to tuition fees. Undoubtedly, the Lib Dems did let the uh, students down who campaign for them. I think the kind of voters who, if you're really passionate about free tuition fees, to be honest, I don't actually think a lot of those people would have gone to the Lib Dems even in 2010 because they are quite, you know, traditionally very left wing yeah. uh, and so see the Liberals as kind of like a neoliberal Nick Clegg as a kind of closet Tory. Um, but yeah, I can definitely see it appealing to some students. I just don't think 
and it is it's it's kind of verbally quite appealing but I don't think in practice it really does a lot to help students uh, the third part of the manifesto then that I want to look at is the pledge not to rise national insurance or VAT now not rising VAT is obviously good for consumers who have to pay less on their products um, is that a feasible thing to, to pledge when labor is spending such large amounts of money is it feasible to pledge not to rise one of sort of the most uh, lucrative taxes yeah I mean it makes sense because in the coalition obviously it went up from 17.5 percent to 20 percent which was a tax that does undoubtedly kind of hurt the people at the bottom the people who rely on you know obviously getting products in um and so i think from that point of view you know labor should um we're doing quite well in that they're looking not to raise that tax they're looking to um raise a kind of more redistributive tax um I think as well, the pledge to not raise national insurance seems quite odd when you look at most of national insurance goes on the NHS, yeah. and Labour have pledged, I think it's another five billion for the NHS. Um, they've obviously said it's going to be fully costed in the next few days, although the manifesto has been launched recently. Yeah. But I think it'll be interesting to see where they get that money for the NHS, because looking at it, you can't kind of seem to just scrap national insurance without having clear evidence of where the funds that go to the NHS are going to go um, and so I think but I think overall the two kind of policies make a lot of sense they're not they're not um, hurting the poorest people and I think not uh, pledging to raise VAT is kind of a direct attack at the Tories who you know Philip Hammond in 20 uh, uh, national insurance rather because in 2015 the Tories did a manifesto of saying they weren't going to um, impose national insurance increase and they did and Philip Hammond did and it was only until Laura Koonsberg from the BBC exposed that this was in the manifesto he supported that they backtracked on it so I think it is Labour kind of directly going against the, the Tories saying that we're going to pledge the same thing but we're actually going to stick to it. Yeah now you mentioned uh, the costing of the Labour manifesto uh, they pledged as you mentioned to raise some of the more redis redistributive taxes so one of the taxes that they want to raise is income tax they want to put higher tax is on the top 5% of earners. So they want to raise the uh, level of tax for those earning over £80,000 a year to 45p. The 45p tax previously only applied to those earning over £150,000. Do you think this is a policy that's going to be popular? And do you think that these kind of taxes are the way to fund the nearly £50 billion of spending that Labour have promised? I think income tax is a good place to start because it directly, rather than you know the kind of bizarre commitments to corporation tax, income tax directly goes... Um, for the kind of rich, wealthy individuals, the elites. So from that point of view, it makes sense. I actually think the income tax policy isn't as radi radical as it could have been. Um, I think if you look at kind of Jeremy Corbyn was traditionally and John McDonnell associated with the kind of Benites of the Labour Party who would have probably preferred something in the region of 60%, 55-60% yeah. on income tax for people earning over 80 to 100 uh, grand. Um, and so I think from that point of view, it could be argued that they've toned it down. I think in an ideal world, Jeremy Corbyn would have kind of gone for the higher earners a lot more. Yeah. But I think the policy makes a lot of sense. It's, what, 40p at the minute, um, the top rate of tax. And so I think uh, by increasing it to 45p on everyone earning over 80 grand, it makes sense in theory. Um, the only concern I would have is that 80 grand, reducing it from 120 grand to 80 grand and incorporating that kind of sphere of earners as well, I'm not sure how much that will help because people on 80 grand, it sounds a bit ridiculous to say, but they can sometimes be quite squeezed in places yeah. like London. You know, you can't get on the property ladder in London unless you earn substantially more than 80 grand. Um, and so, yeah, I think from that point of view, um, it's it's not as radical as it could have been. But I, per on an ideological point of view, I don't personally agree with that. Um, so the other main tax rise pledged by uh, Labour is on corporation tax. Now, corporation tax, they've pledged to raise to 26% uh, by the end of the Parliament. So that would be 2022. Um, do you think that that's a good idea? Because will that, combined with the increase in taxes for those over earning over £80,000, will that lead to some sort of brain drain do you think where businesses don't come to the UK they don't invest in the UK because it's going to cost them more and the people with the skills and the talent that gets them paid over £80,000 a year will be put off coming to the UK or do you think that this is a fair tax and a good way to fund spending for labour? I think corporation tax is something that is really easy to kind of attack. It's easy to attack corporations and businesses. Um, and by this is a massive tax increase. I mean, from 19% yeah. to raise it to 26% over or by 2021 is crazy. I mean, that is, that is a, a massive increase in corporation tax. Yeah. I think particularly what it shows are 
Labour not really trying to make a success of Brexit as well. Labour don't really know what their position is on Brexit, and by pledging to increase corporation tax, what they're saying is they don't want these businesses to stay in the UK who are threatened to leave by our vote to uh, exit the European Union. And so I think it, it shows once again that Labour aren't the party of business. Yeah. By you know, if you actually want to attack the rich earners, you attack them by income tax as opposed to corporation tax by um, increasing this from corporation tax. I think it's going to cost jobs. I think businesses are going to move to other countries. Although France and other places in Europe have substantially larger corporation taxes, um, you know, America with Donald Trump, whilst I appreciate he isn't the most popular figure yeah. at the minute, he's certainly going to reduce corporation tax in the United States. Although it maybe won't be, you know, to the same. I, mean, it's, I think it's about 39% in the US now, corporation tax, so it's never going to be as low as Britain. But it's going to make the US a far more appealing place to start businesses in. And so I think, uh, from that point of view, once again, it shows that Labour are an anti-business party, um, and I think the corporation tax rise is not going to do working people many favours, or the, or, the, or the economy generally. Thank you, Henry. Uh, we will hopefully be back soon with more analysis of some of the other manifestos as the parties release them over the next few days. Remember as well to check out some of our interviews with candidates uh, for Parliament in Coventry South and Warwick and Leamington, who are the local constituencies for you if you're voting here at university. Thank you for watching.